Hey guys, so I've been getting a lot of questions on what to look for in a barn, how do you know if the horses are well treated, how do you know if it's a good facility, um, where do you find the good barns, things like that, which Akira, stop. <laughs> if you hear any noise either at my door or in the hallway, that's my dogs playing. They were being very annoying this morning. Um, so I'm just going to go through what I do when I'm looking for barns and I have been helping uh, several people find barns that were at my old barn um, that closed down. It's still, the one barn is still open but it's being foreclosed on because no one would buy the location. Uh, the other one was sold and it got cut up into several pieces. So the trails are gone and the barn that's on the east side is gone. So I'm still helping people that are at the original location move, uh, which has been a bit of an ordeal. So the first thing that you need to look for is location. Now, where I live, there are like 30 barns because I'm in a really big city. Uh, so location is one of those things where there's not really very many in the middle, but when you get to the outskirts of the north and the south, you get like 15 barns per area which is great but if you're in an area where you don't have that kind of um what, what's the word i'm thinking of diversity no selection i don't know i don't know what I'm, the word i'm looking for but if you don't have that many barns to choose from obviously location is going to be one of those things that might be lower down the list um, but location is very important, obviously, because you don't want to have to spend a lot of gas money driving to and from the barn because horses are very expensive on their own, let alone adding in gas prices and whatnot. Uh, the barn that I'm at now is like 15 miles from my house, which is a horrible drive because it's on the freeway and if there's any traffic, it's horrible. Um, but it used to be like 20 miles from my house, which is even worse. So in my area where I'm trying to move Bugsy now is like the barns are anywhere between 7 and 13 miles. So 7 miles is way better than 15. Um, but if you can find a barn that's like under 10 miles from your house, that's fantastic. Um, if you have a couple of barns that are close, then the next step applies. Uh, looking for amenities is always another thing that's very important. It might even be more important than location to some people. Um, some people are like, no, the barn's too far away. I don't care if it has this great stuff. I don't want to go there. But for some people, the amenities are far more important and they will take the time to drive. So you do have to figure out which is more important to you. For me, if I can find pasture boarding or shared boarding where not like I'm sharing a horse, but like I'm sharing a paddock. I will drive anywhere. I will go anywhere uh, because I do really love pasture boarding. Uh, and here it's not really pasture, it's more they're in like a big paddock full of dirt, which is fine. That's that's perfectly fine. I don't care. That's what she was. That's what she had at the ranch, so she's used to it. But I just find that horses, when they're in a stabling of environment with other horses and there's no barriers between them it's way better for the horse they get stimulus all day long and the horses are for the most part they get more relaxed when they're in a stall with or in a big paddock with a bunch of other horses um which is why i really 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 wish there was a shared uh paddock boarding in my city. I was going to call it a town. It's not a town. It's way bigger than that. Um, but sadly, I haven't found anything like that yet, which is very sad because I don't like stall boarding. Um, but yeah, that's one thing that I would go very far for. So you want to make sure that you can find if they provide lessons, that's what you need to look for. If they have trails and you want trails, that's something to look for. If they do showings, if they have turnouts, 
how many times a day they feed. I prefer three times a day just because it's better for their uh, digestive system to have three meals throughout the day, much like ours. Four is even better, having smaller meals throughout the day. But I, but three is good. Two is not that great. Um, it's not bad for a horse. It's just it's not that good for them. So figuring out what you and your horse's specific needs are is very important. And then after you've found a barn, a couple or a couple of barns that have the amenities in a location that is okay with you, then you can look at the barn. Also, if I'm looking down a lot, I'm looking at my notes. Uh, would I say that in every video where I write down notes? But for those of you who haven't seen those videos, that's what I'm looking at. So at the barn, the things that are key, like red flags, um, to tell me how well the horses are taken care of and how well the facility is taken care of. The first thing I always look for is how many flies are there. Now in the winter time, this is very hard to tell, but in the summer, if you if there the facility is full of flies, that is a red flag to me that it's either not well maintained, um, it's dirty, the stalls aren't cleaned properly or on a regular occasion. So if there's a bunch of flies, that tells me that the horses aren't being that well taken care of, or at least the facility's not being well taken care of. Um, and a lot of the time, a lot of flies mean a lazy barn owner. Uh, and if you're at a barn that has a lot of flies, I'm not saying anything bad about that. Uh, it's just, to me, that tells me that they aren't taking the time and effort to get rid of that fly problem, which you can do all kinds of things. You can get the fly predators, you can feed fly through, which I made a video on. Um, you can get your manure taken off site with a garbage, with like a big garbage dumpster, which is what we have, and that reduces the flies immensely. And it's, even, it's not even that bad. It's really not that expensive. Susan and Larry have told me how expensive it is. Uh, and it's, it's cheap considering the fact that it you pay it every three months just like regular trash and sewer so it's not that hard to get rid of a lot of flies the next thing I look at is the horses that are already on the property if I'm seeing any kind of rib and not like healthy rib because there is horses that are healthy if they bend in a certain way and you see their rib that's fine but if I'm looking at a horse and it's standing straight on it's squared up and I can see its ribs or its hips or its withers and it's not an older horse like if you guys could I don't know if you could see it but on any of the videos where I showed uh, the Appaloosa cat he looked very skinny in the video clips that was because it was his last year and he wasn't maintaining weight well and he was 30 or not 30 he was 26 years old yeah 26 and he was just an old boy and we didn't ride him anymore um he got exercise walking around the property but he didn't he wasn't holding his weight and we couldn't get him to keep weight on we had him on so many supplements and so many kinds of grain to try and keep that weight on him and he just couldn't so if it's an older horse i understand if they're skinny because i do know what it's like to own an old horse that's in its last years and they're not holding weight but if it's like an eight-year-old that's skinny that's not that great if horses have open sores or long feet that tells me that they're not well taken care of um also i like to touch the horses and sometimes i'll even pinch their skin on their neck a little bit and if the skin goes directly down like you pinch it and pull like you give it just a little pinch not a hard pinch just a little pinch and then let go if the skin goes back instantly they're not dehydrated, but if you pinch and it slowly goes back down, that means they're dehydrated. And it's very easy to do that without anybody noticing. Um, also, sometimes horses, if you poke them in their nose, uh, and if it's hard, like not, horses have, there's a certain texture to a horse's nose. But if you poke it and it's harder than that normal texture, like Bowie, back when Bowie was around, Scott's horse, the thoroughbred, that was that first stall. If you poked his nose, it was so, it was like brick hard. That tells you that the horse is dehydrated. So that's not good. 
Uh, and the next thing is the facility. When you look across the facility, if there are fences that haven't been fixed, if there are stalls that are just torn down and they're just not being fixed, um, if the stalls are dug out really deep and there's just puddles of, of not manure, of pee everywhere and it's soggy and it looks like a bog, that tells you that the horses aren't taken care of, the facility's not taken care of, and that's a red flag that that's not a barn where you want your horse to be well taken care of to go to. Hi, Akira. I see your little paw. She's got her paw under my door. It's so cute. So those are the things that I look for when I look for barns. Um, and if it, I hadn't had such an issue, finding a barn when I first moved Bugsy out here, I would not have picked Scott's barn because there were flies, the horses weren't t well taken care of, and the facility wasn't that great. However, he was, that was the only barn that allowed me to work off board, and I wasn't financially stable enough to keep Bugsy without that. Um, and Susan's side was really nice, so we were very happy when Scott left because now it's a much better facility and we do check off on all those points now, uh, which is great. But I hope that helped guys. If you have any more questions on uh, finding a barn, let me know in the description, or not in the description, that's where I talk, <laughs> in the comment section and I will be happy to answer any of your questions. Um, also, if you have any other ideas as to what I can do for videos, that'll be great. That's much appreciated. And I'll see you guys next time.